We've got two practice exercises, one from page 182 and one from page 183 of the textbook, both dealing with Hess's law. Essentially what Hess's law allows us to do is allows us to take enthalpies for individual reactions and combine them to find an enthalpy for an overall reaction. There are a few things we need to keep in mind when we're using Hess's law. That is that if we reverse a reaction, if we write it backwards, flip the products and reactants, we need to reverse the sign of the enthalpy. So the value will be the same, but the sign will change. The other thing we can do is we can multiply reactions by a factor. So let's say I wanted to double an entire reaction. If I multiply an entire reaction by a factor of two, I also need to multiply the enthalpy by a factor of two. Same thing would happen if I divide a reaction by a factor of two, I would need to divide the enthalpy by a factor of two. So when you're doing these problems, it's a good idea to try to figure out which things you need to keep, so which compounds have to be on the reactant side, which compounds have to be on the product side, and then which compounds will cancel out. Compounds will cancel out just like they would algebraically if they are on opposite sides of the reaction arrow. So let's take a look at this first problem. They're giving us two different reactions. So the reaction of carbon as graphite with oxygen to make carbon dioxide, and the reaction of carbon as diamond with oxygen to make carbon dioxide. And what they're asking us to do is to find the enthalpy for this overall reaction here. Since this is the overall reaction that we want, we can see that graphite is on the reactant side and diamond is on the product side. So if I go up and look at these two reactions, I can see that in the first one, graphite is where I want it to be. Graphite is on the reactant's side. But in the second one, diamond is not where I want it to be. I want diamond to be on the product side, so I'm going to need to reverse this reaction. So I'm going to go ahead and write these two reactions out. I know that I'm keeping the carbon graphite reaction, so I'll just write that out normally. And that the delta H value for that is negative 393.5 kilojoules. Now I know that I need to write the other one in the opposite direction. So what that means is I want it to be forming carbon dioxide and producing the diamond and the O2. Now since I flipped the direction, that means I need to flip the sign. So this delta H is going to be positive 395.4. So if you take a look, now I've got carbon dioxide, one on the product side, one on the reactant side, those are going to cancel. And I've got oxygen, one on the reactant side, one on the product side, those are going to cancel. So if I add these reactions together algebraically, what I end up with is carbon as graphite going to carbon as diamond, which is exactly what I want. I can also add the enthalpies algebraically. So I've got negative 393.5 kilojoules, which I'm adding to a positive 395.4 kilojoules. Again, remembering that the reason that this is now positive is because it used to be negative, but since I flipped, since I reversed the reaction, I reverse the sign, which means the delta H for this overall reaction is going to be positive 1.9 kilojoules. Again, if you flip the reaction, you flip the sign, so same numbers, it just becomes positive or negative. And also make sure that you are having the correct compounds cancel out on each side of the reaction arrow. So let's try another one. In this case, they're again giving us the complete reaction, so this is what they want it to be overall. And they're giving us three sub-reactions that we can add together to create that overall reaction. So what I like to do is identify my reactants and products and try to figure out which side of the reaction they need to be on. So if I look at the first one they give me, I can see NO as a reactant, that's good, I want that to be there, and I can see NO2 as a product, that's also good, I want that to be there. What I don't want is this O3 and this O2. According to this reaction, I just want O by itself. But the only place I see O by itself is here, 
which means I'm going to need to reverse this reaction because I want to have O by itself on my reactant side. So when I think about writing this reaction, I know that the bottom one is going to be reversed, and then I need to do something with that middle reaction. And I'm probably going to want to do something with that middle reaction so that compounds I don't want anymore cancel out. So let's go ahead and start by writing the first one and see if we can figure out what we're going to need to cancel. So we know we're keeping the top one as is, NO plus ozone, O3, makes nitrogen dioxide and regular oxygen. And since we didn't change anything about that, the value for delta H is going to stay exactly the same, negative 198.9. Okay, looking at this reaction, we know that we don't want the ozone, we know that we don't want the O3. So how are we going to get rid of the O3? Well, I need to have O3, or ozone, on the product side for my next reaction so that it cancels. The only way to do that is to flip this middle reaction. So if I flip this middle reaction, I'm going to have 3 halves O2 gas making that O3. Since I flipped the reaction, that means I need to flip the sign on my enthalpy value, so this is going to become positive 142.3 kilojoules. So let's take a look at what we've got going on here. We've got the nitrogen monoxide, which is good. We've got the nitrogen dioxide, which is good. We've got this ozone canceling with this ozone, which is good. But my O2s are not canceling yet because I've got one here, but one and a half here, and I'm still not making the O that I want either. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write out that bottom reaction. But I wanna think very carefully. That bottom reaction shows two single oxygen atoms. I don't need two single oxygen atoms, I just need one. So I'm actually gonna cut that reaction in half and flip it. So when I write that reaction, I'm just gonna write it as O goes to one half O2. So again, what I've done is I flipped the order of this reaction and I've cut it in half. So a way to see that is that I did one half of that entire reaction. If I flip it and I cut it in half, that means that I'm going to change the sign to be negative instead of positive, and it also needs to be half of its value. So I'm gonna divide this by two, and I'm also gonna give it a negative sign. So that enthalpy is now gonna be negative 247.5. Last thing we need to do is just make sure that everything is canceling out correctly so we can add together our enthalpy values. So again, let's make sure we have what we want. We know we want one NO, we know we want one O2, and we know we want one NO2, which means that the O3s need to cancel, and they do because I've got one on the reactant side here, one on the product side here. And the next thing I need to make sure cancel are the O2s. I've got a single O2 here and half an O2 here, so I've got one and a half O2 on the product side, and I actually have one and a half O2 on the reactant side, which is written as three halves. So these do cancel because I've got three halves here, and I've got one, two, three halves there as well. So everything is going to cancel out exactly as we want here, and we can rewrite this as our overall reaction NO reacting with a single oxygen atom to make NO2 gas. So when they give you these problems in the textbook, there is always going to be some way to either flip, multiply, or divide the equations to get the overall reaction that you want. You may have to do some trial and error, try it a couple of different ways, but eventually you will get there. Now, since I've been changing my values for enthalpy as I go, in this case we left it alone, in this case, we changed the sign because we flipped the reaction. In this case, we changed the sign and we divided it by two because we flipped the reaction and we divided the reaction by two. Now I can just add those three values together and get an overall enthalpy value for the reaction of negative 304.1 kilojoules. So that's my final answer down here. 
Again, with these Hess's Law problems, you really just want to make sure that you're writing out all your steps, making sure your intermediates cancel, and make sure that you're changing your values of enthalpy as you modify the reactions.